I'm Brandon Carey, Director of Praxis Center, and today the talk is about writing a letter uh, to a curator. This letter template that I'm going to describe today would also work for uh, many other forms. Uh, it doesn't have to be just a curator. It could also be to the director of a museum, or it could be to anybody in the art world that you're um, trying to get something from, uh, be it a friendship, um, interest, you know, to look at your work, or, or, or something like that. So that's what we're focusing on now. Um, and and, and this, this kind of short talk, kind of a mini class, is about how to structure that letter uh, to whoever it is. So let's just talk about curators, right, because these are some of the more um, spammed people <laughs> uh, in the world of art. And by that I mean, you know, there was a curator on here uh, who you can still find from London, in the mini lectures who gave a talk and she was talking about reaching her and she said, you know, don't, don't just spam me with your portfolio, don't just send me a link and say, here's my work, you know, there, there has to be a conversation started, you know, and, and her idea was to start a conversation with her a bit on Twitter, but um, I'm going to give you specifics to how to start that conversation and what that, what that means. Um, because you want people to, to, to really want your work, right? You, you want people to want to hear more from you. So, okay, here's how it works. The first paragraph of your letter, you know, and I believe all letters should start out, dear so-and-so, dear, you know, uh, a lot of times letters start out, um, I mean, using my name, let's say, hi, Brainerd, or Brainerd, comma. None of those, both of those seem a little too casual for a first letter to somebody asking somebody. Dear Brainerd, which I use, you know, with everybody, always, all the time, you know, Dear John, dear Mary, dear Matt, it's always dear. Uh, I think it's just good form in letter writing, you know, and it doesn't offend anybody. And um, being, it's a professional form, right? You know, dear so-and-so isn't, isn't about a love letter. It's a professional form. It's, it's how you address someone. And, and to address them like, hey, or, or, you know, or something less is um, better to err, I think, on the side of being more professional than too casual. You know, too casual uh, in you know in, insinuates that you, you you think you're closer to that person than than of course you are, and it's it's presumptuous and and can be offensive to some people. So okay, I know this is a little granular, but I think these things are very important. Dear so and so, you know, you 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 if it's the first time you're meeting them, um, you've never written to them before, and it's a curator, dear Ms. M. S. So and so. Um, Dear uh, Mr., you know, last name, uh, you know, you could use the first name sometimes, but that is quick to personal. You know, I certainly get a lot of letters that are Dear Brainerd, very few that are Dear Mr. Carey. So uh, Dear Brainerd is okay um, to write to somebody, a curator, Dear Sylvia, Dear Richard, that's okay. Um, by default, it's using their last name, but otherwise, um, if you want to, you can use their first name. Uh, that happens a lot these days. I get I get cold letters from everything from from businesses to to from artists that it's dear Brainerd. So um, so that doesn't bother me, and it seems to be a form that's used more and more. It used to be it started off dear Mister, dear Ms., and then the second or third round of letters would be um, dear first name. You, you know, to you get on a first name basis. Okay. So that's how the letter begins, dear so-and-so. I, I, I belabor that point because I can't tell you how important that really is, uh, the dear. You know, even if it seems awkward to write, you know, it's not, a, a, you know, a declaration of affection. It's, um, it's a declaration of respect, really, um, a formal type of respect. So, um, so then the first paragraph that you're writing is a compliment. If you're writing to a curator or a gallery owner or a collector or, or anybody that you want something from, you know, a patron, potential patron that you want to talk to about money, anything like that, where, where I'm, I'm modeling this on, you want to talk to a curator, right? You want a curator to look at your work. So, um, so essentially, the first paragraph should be a compliment. It should say something about something they have done and why it was uh, beautiful, special, uh, amazing, transformative. Something sincere, right? If you're writing to a curator that, that that you found because you went to a local gallery or a local museum and you saw that curator's name and you thought, wow, you know, they should curate some of my work. Um, my, you know, for whatever reason, you're writing to this curator, 
research them a little bit if you haven't gone to their shows or anything and reference something they've done and talk about it. You know, if you're writing to a curator, the very, very first paragraph, dear Sylvia, dear Jim, should say, um, I saw your show at the Hirshhorn, and I want to tell you why I thought it was, you know, uh, one of the best shows I've seen all year. And then you give one sentence or two about it. But, but, but a sincere sentence, you know, curators put tons of effort into shows, and they rarely get... Uh, feedback on their efforts. They get feedback on, oh, that's a great artist that you curated into that show, or, oh, I really like those artists. But rarely do people say, I like the way you mounted the show. I like the way the show was conceived, the way the artwork was kind of talking to one another. I mean, whatever you think, you know, is, is, is happening there and is sincere. But the idea is that they're engaged right away. And I could give you many examples of how I've, I've, I've seen artists do this, but it's, it's, a, it's a great, great tool if you're being sincere and it will engage them immediately um, to tell them sincerely why you liked a recent show they've done or look at the last three shows they've done and you notice, oh, they've all been, she's, or he's been doing work on, um, on uh, displaced people and they're kind of an activist curator or they've been doing work on, 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 on something else, right? But, but to, to know the curator a little bit and to be able to compliment them in the first paragraph, they're engaged, right? You've got them. Okay, so um, I'm going through these parts of the letter. Um, to summarize, it starts off, dear, first name, comma, first paragraph. This is to any curator that you should know a little bit about. The first paragraph is a compliment. The second paragraph is you show a connection. So what is that? You, the, the connection that you have to them, right? So after you've said, um, dear Sylvia, dear, dear whatever, comma, compliment about a show they've curated and, and why you thought that they did a good job, you know, the more specific, the better. And again, this is just a sentence, but compliments go a long way. It shows that you're not just writing to a curator. You know who this person is, right? So, okay. Um, you write to them, and uh, and the and the the second paragraph is showing the connection, and showing the connection means showing how 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 your work connects to them somehow, to their to, to what they do, to their to their mission, let's say. So um, so if they're a curator, uh, maybe you're not sure what their mission is, but you see they've done work where. Uh, they've shown a series of pen and ink drawings, or they've shown a series of mixed media collage, or they've shown um, a series of work uh, that had to, that was more conceptually based, um, and you 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 know or monochromatic, and you want to uh, know more about that curator. You want to build a connection. So first, you're complimenting them on the show you saw them because they mounted a show of monochromatic paintings, or they mounted a show of pen and ink paintings and then you're saying you know I'm a monochromatic painter or I'm a pen and ink painter or mixed media and um, you don't have to say it that directly but that is the connection the connection is um, we have something in common so you've just you've just complimented them they've listened to you um, they've read what you've had to say and let's say the compliment is something like I love the way you put work together or the way the show is assembled with historical and contemporary work and the second connection you can can be, you know, I have a great interest in, in history, and sometimes in my work, I also reference historical figures. Something, you know, some that type of connection. It could be um, content that, that, that you're connecting with. It could be uh, the form, you know, I'm also a photographer, I'm also a pen and ink, I'm also, uh, you know, um, monochromatic painter or, or something like that, or sculptor. So you show the connection, right? Dear so-and-so, compliment in, in a sentence or so. Do a little bit of research. You could write 10 letters a day like this if you do a little bit of research on each curator. Compliment, um, sincere compliment, um, uh, really, and, 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 and thoughtful. Compliment, and then um, second paragraph is showing connection, right? Uh, how you relate, how you guys relate to one another. The third paragraph is the ask. Um, this is normally goes at the beginning, right, and turns people off. The ask is, um, I was, and there's two ways to do this. You could say, I wanted to ask you if you would, if you would look at my website. I'd love to show you some images. 
don't send them your website. Say, I'd like to ask if you would be interested in looking at my website. I'd love to send it to you. Because if you get someone asking, there's so much greater likelihood that they're going to look at it, right? So don't put the website right in there or attach images. Maybe there's another kind of ask. Maybe the ask is for money. You're writing to a patron. Maybe the ask is something else. But whoever you're writing to, this format of dear so-and-so and then, and then the um, – First paragraph is a, is a compliment. Second paragraph is showing the connection. And the third paragraph is the ask. Um, it's where you ask for what you want. Will you look at my images? Will you look at my art? Um, and then the fourth and final piece, which is essential and, and, and super important for always getting answers from everybody, is to follow up by saying, I will follow up in a week by phone or with an email something like that and then you follow up in a week and you send the same email basically and say i'm following up i sent this email last week and um and paste it in below and say i'd love to hear from you i'll, I'll follow up in a week if i don't and you keep following up until you get a yes or a no until you hear from them they write back and say sorry i'm too busy to look at your website okay they don't get the connection the, or the compliment that's fine but this is how to reach people effectively okay so in summary, um, this is the template for how to write a letter to get something from someone, and I'm focusing specifically on how to get a curator to look at your art. So the structure of the letter, in summary, is always started off, dear so-and-so. I would use their first name. That's a little informal, but much better than just writing hi or their name or nothing at all. That looks like a form letter or something. Always start dear first name, comma, first paragraph should be a compliment. Tell the curator, re do a little research, compliment them on their show. You should be able to do a, a good job at that. You're an artist and can say these works are beautiful together. Uh, whatever it is you want to say. Um, after the compliment, you show them the connection in the second paragraph. And this is not a lot of writing altogether. The second paragraph, you're explaining how you two are connected, that you also relate to images in a certain way or, or aesthetics that, that, that you know, you're complimenting them on, something like that, a connection between you two. Because otherwise, why are you writing to this person, right? The connection. And then last, the third thing is the ask. You say, I'd like to um, ask you to... To, uh, to look at my website, for example. Uh, may I send you my website? It's a question. And they have to answer it. Um, and then the last one is, I'll, I'll follow up within a week. It was lovely to see your show. And then you keep following up till you get an answer. That is the way to make a connection. You know, there's so many artists, musicians, filmmakers that don't tell you they've written like a dozen letters like that and followed up, followed up, followed up, followed up, only to, you know, to, to feel like maybe nobody really wants to hear from them, only to find out it makes a connection. You know, all over the world, globally, uh, because of the uh, kind of email environment we're in, we have to follow up professionally and, and, and until we get an answer, and that's the, the form for it. So that is my talk on writing a letter to a curator about, um, about looking at your website, how to get them to look at it. And again, it was, it was, uh, it was four parts to this, this letter. And the last part was to follow up and you send that letter again. And this is perhaps the most important aspect of it. Um, you send that letter again the next week and the next week and the next week until you get an answer by saying, I'm following up and you paste in the letter. It's professional conduct. It's how you do it. Otherwise, what happens is you, you, you draft this letter, you went to this trouble, you send it out, you don't get a response, and then you write another one, you know, that's, you know, to another person, you have to get a yes or a no. You have to get a yes or a no. That's a professional courtesy, and it's not a lot to ask. If you keep writing to them politely, you will get a yes or no. In most cases, a yes, because it's just look at my website, right, for now, and it may relate to them or not. So thank you um, for being part of this talk. Now I want to answer questions. Uh, do you guys have any questions at all um, or other topics? I'm here to answer it all. Okay, and who's here? Jane. Hey, Jane from Santa Fe. Great to have you here. Hope, nice to have you here. And Bill, um, okay, so two good questions here. Um, Paula, what about having your website hyperlinked in your signature? 
You could do that. You could do that. But what what I'm suggesting in this letter is, you know, it's all about making a personal connection. And when you ask someone, can you know, would you look at my website? When if you've made this type of letter, and then you say, would you look at my website? They have to then write to you and say, yes, I'd love to look at your website. They're now soliciting, you know, your art from you. I'm, I'd like to look at your art. That's much more powerful than them just kind of clicking on it. And it also doesn't doesn't um, doesn't create a dialogue, you know. So if if you just wrote a letter and said, you know, I hope you'd like to take a look at my my site, which is below, you could do that, or in my signature, or right here. But then maybe they don't write back to you, right? So you have to follow up. Uh, write the same letter. Did you see the site? And maybe they did see the site, um, but there's no question asked. Do you know what I mean? So you so you can't expect a reply. Um, you're just showing them your website and giving them a compliment. They don't have to reply to that. But if you're writing a letter that asks for something, may I send you my website, then um, they have to respond. That's, that's the theory behind this. Of course, you can just send a website like, like that. But the theory behind this is to build a connection to be sure that you're reaching that person. So, okay, Bill. Um, and if, that, if, if you want to ask more, ask, ask me more on that. Bill says, is snail mail more effective than email? You know, it's such a great question, Bill. Um, I think snail mail is very powerful, very powerful. Um, we get less and less of it all the time. So when we get a letter that's not junk mail, which is most of what's out there now, um, it's special. So, you know, you know, a hand-addressed envelope that's really hand-addressed, you know, that's special. We don't get very much of that. Maybe some around holidays or your birthday, but even that, right? It's, it's, it's all online. So absolutely, Bill, I would say, um, you know, uh, snail mail, regular mail, you know, with stamps is great. You know, uh, I think it's, it's powerful. I think it helps people to open it and to engage. You can do both, of course. But, um, you know, with the first letter, like the one I'm describing, you could write it in that format, a uh, compliment in that format. It's very lovely to receive. Um, and, you know, you don't even have to end it with, can I show you my website? You could just end it with the compliment and say, you know, um, I'd like to know when your next show is, um, you know, something like that. You don't have to say, can I show you my website? Your ask could be something else. So letters, I think, and especially snail mail, Bill, absolutely regular mail is a great way to build a relationship, which is what this is about. Handwritten, shall it be handwritten? If you have nice handwriting, absolutely. Uh, handwriting is, is, is a beautiful thing to see. And I don't mean that you have a calligraphic script. You have a nice print that's legible that has some charm to it, or you have a cursive that looks good, Jane, go for it. You know, I think that's super uh, attractive. Uh, Andrew, my question is what to say when people ask for your schedule. Um, when they ask for your schedule, if, if it's about build, making a, a, uh, an appointment, right, to meet them, you know, uh, give them defined times. But could you ask that again, Andrew? Because I don't understand. Um, what to say when people ask for your schedule? Yeah, I don't, I don't quite get that. Um, Carol, should you include your phone number below your signature? Yeah, you could do that. A phone is hardly ever used these days, right? Phone number below your signature is, is, is kind of cool. You know, people could text you or call you if they have to. That seems very private these days, right? People text less and less and and call less and less you know people to reach through other means i mean they're still texting of course uh, among friends sometimes or, or, or whatever or family but texting um is is a great form so a lot of times the people you're writing to curators may also have a signature with their phone number in it call them up text them you can follow up that way too uh, in one week if you don't hear from them with a letter you can text them or call them if they're curators that work at an institution especially call them you know and what do you say in that follow-up call you say i sent you a letter last week because i i so love that show you curated and and it was about this and that start off with a compliment again and i was wondering if you got my letter i was asking you a question about what your next show will be or if you'd look at my website or whatever it is so I hope that helps, Carol, and I hope, Andrew, you're going to ask, ask that question again that I didn't understand. Should you include your phone? Yes. Um, 
One could include an email address for ease of response. Yes, absolutely. You could include an email address for, for ease of response, absolutely, within the snail mail letter. Why not? Um, as well as the phone number. Um, yeah, this is a form of courtship. That's right. Um, that's right. But how often to cut to the chase? I think just like in a courtship, you know, um, it's kind of very American to cut more to the chase, you know, in Europe, uh, especially uh, galleries, museum relationships tend to simmer for a while before something comes together. It's um, cutting to the chase is considered a bit, a bit, a bit forward in, in, in most art exchanges in Europe. They want to really build a relationship here in the United States. It's, um, less so but i would i would i would restrain yourself uh kristen to not cut to the chase um to to court more which means build the relationship you know make it clear to the curator that your compliment in that letter wasn't a wasn't a kind of a a, a one-off compliment that's not going to happen again um so uh that's what that's what i would do um build that relationship cut to the chase i don't know second or third letter but you know cutting to the chase can also mean you don't say here's my website the curator it, it now has six compliments from you they know you're an artist it's like what art do you do they're going to ask that you know um or maybe you know the curator through instagram and that's partly why you wrote to them uh, an email if you would start liking that curator's posts on Instagram, that's a quick way for them to just look at your art immediately. That's cutting to the chase, but letting them do the work in a sense. Uh, okay, great. Uh, Andrew said, I'm saying that I, I've invited someone to my studio, a busy person. They sent me an email asking for my schedule, and I said I was free all day. The next day I got no response. Should I have given them my whole schedule for the week? Okay, Andrew, great question. Right back to that person. Keep writing to that person. It may take 20 emails or more to get them in. Yes, you're, that, that was too open for them is what happened. When inviting somebody over, say, I have, uh, can you come by between 12 and 1 or, um, or 4 to 5? Let me know if either of those times work for you. Again, you're asking then him a question, right? So he's saying, um, uh, what's your what's your schedule and what he means is what are the slots I could come by tomorrow all day? Uh, it's too open for him and it's not a question, you know, it's harder to answer. I'm free all day But if you say I'm only available between 12 15 and 1 p.m. and uh, 5 30 and 6 15 a busy person um, We'll get that. They'll get that. And that's what they want um, because uh, just my schedule all day is too free. Um, that's what they mean by what's your schedule. They want to know what hours you free. And they're used to dealing with other business people who have, you know, very limited free time. So all day, yeah, is, is, is too open-ended. It's too hard for him to answer. He said, let's get on your calendar. Right. Yeah. Total, total business person, right? Let's get on your calendar. He wants to begin the process. So, um, I hope all is well with all of you. Again, um, one of the wonderful things about this community, this group, this tribe, is the way everyone comments on each other's posts. That's what makes it a kind of a supportive and loving artist community as opposed to a competitive one, right? People are saying congratulations when you get a show. People are asking questions and talking about how they got shows. You know, it's a it's a generous group, but it's a generous group because you guys are generous. So. I just want to um, end this by saying thank you for commenting on each other's posts. And, and if you haven't done that lately, that's the way to get engaged here is to just comment on other people's posts. And, um, and don't hesitate, please, to, um, to suggest a topic that you'd like me to talk. If you look in the events tab, you'll see there are several uh, coming up. So uh, I wish you well. And other, other things that I'm also going to start doing. Uh, Q&A, audio Q&As back and forth with you guys. I'll start announcing soon, too, um, something new to get a little more uh, engagement and so we can look at work, perhaps. Okay, so um, I think that's it. Um, you're welcome, Kip, Hope, Giovanna, um, Carol, Bill, Jane, Andrew, Kristen. Uh, great to have you guys all aboard. Uh, have a wonderful day. I wish you well in your practice. And um, thank you for being part of Practice Center and being part of what makes this a, a, a kind of warm, supportive community, which, which is, is everything, right? It's how, we, it's how we survive and move forward. 
So um, thank you all, and um, lots of lots of great success to everyone. Talk soon.